A Christian doctor who lost his job at the Department for Work and Pensions over his stance on transgender pronouns has been vindicated by the General Medical Council. The doctor lost his legal action against the DWP for religious discrimination, but is planning to apply to the ECHR for a ruling on the case. But the GMC recently found that his views do not constitute an issue requiring further GMC action being taken, with a view to removing or restricting his registration. So joining me now to discuss this is the man himself, Dr David McCarruth. Do Dr McCarruth, thank you very much for joining us. Can we start off by just laying it out there, what the D DWP claims you resigned from your post for, and did you resign, or were you, did you lose your job another way? Well, I'm quite certain, Calvin, and it's an absolute um, pleasure to meet you, by the way, but uh, I'm quite certain that, that I didn't jump, I was pushed, uh, that uh, I was fired. But we we're, were all agreed that the Department for Work and Pension said that because of my refusal to use transgender pronouns, I was unfit to do the job. Uh, my, my maintenance is that I was a good doctor, I was fit to do the job, and that what I was saying was uh, said in good conscience and from a Christian conscience, and of course that led to court cases. It's shocking to me that they somehow seem to um, presume that you have to have compelled speech in order to do your job as a doctor. Um, how does that relate to you in your day-to-day -day work? How would it affect you? Well, well again, the, the, the thing there was that they were prepared to say, for the sake of a single pronoun, that, that I uh, wasn't really fit to work as a doctor. Now, in my previous work in accident and emergency and my subsequent work, we're saving people every day and uh, their lives. And essentially that's just that's not even considered to be relevant compared to the fact that somebody might get the wrong pronoun at some point uh, there was a very small risk of that happening at the time but essentially so concerned were they that somebody might be offended by my actions that all of my experience all of my years as a doctor counted for nothing and my christian conscience counted for nothing and that bothered me the most that's the crux of the matter though isn't it that, that they might be offended by your christian faith and it's your faith that you were ad adhering to by not going along with their compelled speech Yes, and, and this, this, is, this is where the court cases really um, were concerning. And the court cases were me taking the government to court over the issue of pronouns. The first case ru ruled that because I didn't believe in transgender ideology and by extension, we all have to believe in transgender ideology. Uh, therefore, I didn't have any case to stand. I, that that, that, that uh, transgender ideology must be believed and acted upon by every doctor, nurse or whoever. The second court case said, no, no, that was wrong. I'm entitled to be a Christian. I'm entitled to believe that uh, it, it's a lie to use a transgender pronoun. I'm in, and I'm entitled to say that I'm not going to. But they went on to say that the Equalities, the Equalities Act didn't protect me. Now, I would argue we're Christians. There's lots of us. Um, we're still here. We've been here for a very long time. We're not going anywhere. But if the Equalities Act can't protect the Christian faith, it can't protect anything. Uh, and that's, that's my concern, that the, the Equalities Act has to protect everybody because we're in a situation where we have a conflict of uh, views and interests. So uh, I think this is a really important battle to fight and that's why we're taking it to the European Court of Human Rights. And what do you ha hope to achieve from the ECHR? Well, I hope, I hope that the um, European Court of Human Rights, um, I'm going there with the Christian Legal Centre, and I'm hoping that they will say that you, you have a free conscience, you're free to believe, not necessarily what I believe, other people are able to believe what they believe, and I'm free to act as well, that nobody can compel me to speak in a certain way, that no one can c compel me to do what I believe is fundamentally a lie. So I'm hoping that the European Court of Human Rights will uphold freedom of speech and freedom from false speech. Freedom to believe to be and freedom to act in that way. As a doctor, do you feel that your Christian faith is in conflict with science or is this in conflict with another set of beliefs which you have called the, the gender ideology? Well, I, I've, I've never felt that my Christian faith was in conflict with science at all. Um, but I do, I do believe that, uh, that science and theology combine when they say that it's impossible for a human being to change sex. So, um, uh, and, and I think that the medical profession has a duty to say that to its patients. Sound medical care, proper medical care begins with truth. If we care about our patients, and most of the doctors I work with do, we can't start from a, a, a foundation which is, which is not s sustainable philosophically, logically, theologically, scientifically. We have to start with the truth, and whatever that truth is, then that is how we must present ourselves to our patients. To me, that is the mark of a caring doctor. It is not the mark of a caring profession when we simply go along with what is not scientific, but is a pure ideology. The idea that there might be 150 genders, the idea that we should each have pronouns uh, of our own choosing, the idea that I could be a cat and you'd have to treat me as a cat. 
You laugh, but that's happening in a school right now. There's a young girl that's identified as a cat, and the teachers are having to tell the boys to stop barking at her. We're going crazy. But Dr. David Macra, thank you yes. so much for your common sense. That, 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 that's right. And I, 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 I was speaking with a girl just a month ago who says she's about to marry a man who identifies as a pig. I can't. I just can't. No, I, 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 let's, 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 let's cut to the bone on this. Let's go right to the core of this and say this, that, that gender ideology combined with Build Back Better, WF, that sort of stuff, these things coming together, I believe are causing our society to disintegrate. I don't believe you can have a scientific, technical, professional medical profession which practices a lie just to keep some kind of political ideology alive. So these issues are really, really important. You understand the situation with Joshua Sutcliffe where he lost his, uh, he was struck off as a teacher. But to say that in two and a half years, he might have used a wrong pronoun. He's a fantastic uh, and, guy fighting the good fight. And so are yeah, you, I, David I, I Macron. Agree Thank you for fighting Joshua, the good fight. I agree with you. Time, time has come to an end, but thank you so much for what you're doing. You have my full support. God bless you. Now, in a statement to, the, to GB News, a DWP spokesman said, Dr. Mackerath resigned from his post. Dr. Mackerath brought a claim in the Employment Tribunal, which was dismissed, and this decision was subsequently upheld on appeal. Joining me now are my duelists, uh, co-founder of Navarra Media, Aaron Bastani, and political, political commentator, Emma Webb. Aaron, we have a conflict of beliefs here. Yeah. Yep. Christianity versus gender ideology. Should it matter which one someone subscribes to if they're treating someone's health? I find this hugely, hugely fascinating. And you're right, I've said this before, we have to understand this as a civil liberties issue and conflicting civil liberties, like say freedom of religious worship and uh, wishing to identify as a certain gender. What I don't understand is this doesn't seem to me that it qualitatively impacts his ability to do his job. Mm. Now, if you were discriminating against somebody because they were gay... And you say, I'm not going to treat you as a GP because you're homosexual. That right. clearly undermines your ability to do your job. In this instance, it's unclear to me how it undermines his ability to do his job. And what makes this even stranger? I disagree with him, by the way. I think you should just, it's called bedside manner in that game. You should just be able to make the person feel comfortable and at ease. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to like them. That's a, a job of a doctor. But anyway, park that. Um, I don't quite understand this whole story because it wasn't actually something that happened in his job. It was something where, in abstraction, it was being discussed in a training or something like this, and he says, well, I wouldn't do it. And then all of a sudden, this has happened. It, it's not like there's a real-world episode where it's emerged and he's had some sort of a fight. I imagine if it did happen with a, a trans person and he used the wrong pronoun and he helped them, I think a, a normal person would just go, idiot, yeah. and, and, and get on with their day. So for it to have got to that level, I think it's... It's a shame because we don't have enough doctors in this country right now as it is. And I think if you start to uh, jettison them on the basis of their, their personal beliefs, it's a, it's a problem. But I, 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 I think he should probably practice and just swallow this particular issue. We probably disagree on okay. that. And Emma, is this just more rising Christophobia? I don't like the term Christophobia. Um, <laughs> I don't like the. I don't. We, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be falling we into to, using their use terms. Their but them. I do think that there is growing anti-Christian sentiment, and it, to even say it's growing, I think it's been growing for a very, very long time. Um, the issue here is 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 even more general than that. It's an issue of freedom of conscience, and I don't agree that I don't think the Equality Act is designed for or should protect the Christian faith or any faith because that's that's. A, I think that would be. A, poisonous use of legislation. Um, but I do, I do think that there is a, there is a real growing anti-Christian sentiment. And this is, this is a perfect example of, as you were saying, Calvin, that clash, and it is hypothetical clash between one ideology and another, a new religion and the old one. Yeah, thank you very much. That was Aaron Bastani and Emma Webb, my duelists.